Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Glad y'all made it back. So we're out here at uh, this concrete plant in Aberdeen for our good customer heritage, and uh, we're here to fix this messy pig. So as you can see here, this thing is making a hell of a mess. And this is after one truck right here, you just saw. So this thing here is made to be portable, folded up and moved from place to place easily. It's all one big trailer basically is what this whole thing is. So the back end here where all your air brakes and axles and all of that stuff is that is all being just completely covered every day with rock sand and uh, cement powder so that's going to make it real nice to move when we need to move it when everything is frozen solid jammed up with material so since this is going to sit here a few years before we move it we built that chute you saw us build in the last episode, which is going to sit right here and now collect all this material and funnel it down onto the ground off the back of the plant here where it can be cleaned up with a loader. The major problem, the reason this is happening, is for some odd reason this plant manufacturer, I'm not going to call out their name, but uh, not one of our usuals, they put a tread belt on here for some reason. So when you have a tread belt on there like that, the only way to scrape it is with this stupid push broom stuck on the end that's supposed to clean it. Well, as you saw, that works real well. Plus, they mounted this hopper out in front of the belt so that there's a gap between the belt and the end of the hopper where all the material can fall down that doesn't make it over into it. Rather than having the hopper enclose the whole bottom of the belt, with the scraper inside like a normal plant so that everything that's scraped and everything that doesn't fall right out of the belt will go down into the hopper and eventually go into the truck. But as you can see, tread belts do not belong on a concrete plant. I don't know why, it's the only one I've ever seen with one. Uh, this is a fairly new manufacturer and I guess they thought they could think of a better way, but it's horrible. It does nothing but make a mess. So there's no way to put a hard scraper against it because of the treads. And, you know, it's a brand new belt, so they don't want to just throw it away and not use it. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to deal with the mess and put it back in the pile. But at least this chute here will help them keep all this area clean so you don't have to deal with this mess every day. And at least be able to just rinse it down and Get, get it out of the plant and get it off of the plant so and I guess we also got a dust collector up top that's acting up so we got the parts in for that finally been broke you can hear it up there popping away so we'll go up there and take a look at that here and see what we got to do for that there's John shoot ready to go all right let me go up this silo and see what we got to do up here. All right, folks. Well, we're up here at the top of the silo. This is our offending dust collector right here. We got a broke 
solenoid on the other side. So we're gonna try to change that out. Problem is it's on the other side over here. So if uh, you'll come on in and take a look here, folks, I'll show you what we're talking about, what we're working on here. If you uh, come on down and take a look here, I'll show you what we're working with. If you look right here, you'll see there's three solenoids on each. One of these solenoids is what pulses the air and cleans the filter and shoots the uh, dust back down inside here. So this one here has broken and has the, uh, the activator of the, uh, sorry, what do you call that stupid thing? The coil is broke off of it, the coil. So I'm gonna pull out this old one, slap in a new one. Groovy, man. That's how you do that. There you go. One new solenoid installed. So now, no more leaks. At least not from that. All good in the hood up here. Man, that's heavy. Way heavier than it looks. Hang on with me. Okay, it's not bad. Now, let me grab a uh, something or another to hook that cable come alongs up to. All right. All right, go it down on the crane a little bit. Yeah, come on down. Come on. 
Come on. Come on. Down. All right. It's not gonna be high enough, is it? Well, oh, stop! Ho, oh, oh. ho! Jesus! All right, come up here and ratchet this. Bring the remote around with you. Yep. <laughs> Hang on. Go up on the crane a little bit and watch yourself. It might come in a little bit. Come on. Come on. All the way up tight. Pick up on it. There you go. Pick up. Oh, stop. All right. Come along. Put down on the crane. Come on. All right, hold that. Okay. Pull forward a little, Sean. Actually, pick your bucket up and tilt it over. Yeah, just like that. Okay, come up on those. Yeah. Come on. Hold it, hold it, just a little bit. All right, right there. Perfect. Holy smokes. That looks pretty damn good right there, John. Dead nuts level, everything's good. This is down. Yep. Okay. Grab that angle iron and your clamp. A little bit of the rigging here. So, got two come alongs up there holding that in. And this one tying this end down here to the loader. 
Now John's getting ready to burn in this angle iron underneath. That's gonna hold it up. We got one there, and then one on the bottom that's gonna go in. And then we'll tack it to that thing and she should be there. And that's how you do that. Shoot it, baby. She's in there. Now, that should stop them from having such a mess underneath and they'll be able to rinse that right out into the loader bucket now. And everything will be copacetic. Yep, she comes right out, just like that. Well, there you have it, folks. I'm glad y'all watched. Hope y'all enjoyed. I'm sure it wasn't too exciting, but another little project in the books for Repairco. Thanks for watching. We'll see y'all in the next one.